Hey folks, Jeff Pullman here with another short reading from the Porch Roof Classic, my semi-autobiographical coming-of-age tale about growing up with baseball in the summer of 1970. Uh, a little something about me first. I'm from Massachusetts, but as you can tell, even though I'm a Red Sox fan, I don't have a Boston accent because I'm from the western side of the state. Otherwise, I'd be saying stuff like, wicked smart, and I parked my car at Star Market. Anyway, today's selection is from Chapter 7, after Joey gets sent to Camp Macalake in the Berkshires for a couple of weeks to get out of his nervous little brother's hair. It's there that he meets Helen, a mysterious dark-haired girl a few years older than him, who will play a pivotal part in his summer drama. An early thunderstorm kept everyone in their tents the next morning, but the sun was out by 1 p.m., and it was time for archery. I always thought learning how to shoot a bow and arrow was a strange activity. It wasn't a skill we would need in the real world. There weren't exactly arrow shooting halls downtown where we could have a few beers and make bets with other archers. The worst part of archery was that I was real bad at it. Like my half-assed attempt at learning the violin for two weeks in fourth grade, I just couldn't hold the damn bow right. The archery instructor was a husky, man-like college girl named Fran, who wore her long hair back in a thick medieval braid and let out a loud whoop every time someone's arrow landed within a few inches of the bullseye. My first attempts were disasters and sent squirrels ducking for cover in the patch of woods behind the targets. What do they call you, Sonny? Fran asked me from halfway across the clearing, her arms folded. Uh, Joey? And what team? Chet? Okay, and did Team Chet get served oatmeal with raisins and nuts this morning? Uh, yeah. And did Joey of Team Chet finish his oatmeal with raisins and nuts? Yep. Well, you fooled me. Fetch your arrows, get back in the line, and watch the others. I handed the bow to Barry and retrieved my wayward arrows from the woods, which took a few minutes. I felt like an idiot and really hated being called Sonny. We were in the same line as the boys from Team Greg with Team Sally and Ursula a few yards away. Yonkers Fred was missing the target too, not because he was a spaz, but because Team Ursula was a little too distracting for him. Whoop, whoop! Fran's double whoop suddenly froze us in our tracks. We looked right and saw a black-haired girl calmly load and fire arrow after arrow at the center of the bullseye. The first three hit the blue ring, the fourth hit the red, and the last one stuck in the yellow. Everyone cheered and applauded, and I got a better look at her. It was the girl from swimming, with the dark, soulful eyes, who looked at me before yanking off her bathing cap. She handed her bow to the next girl, gave a mock curtsy to the approving crowd, and retreated to the back of the line without even bothering to retrieve her prize arrows. Fran was so impressed she hurried up and fetched them for her. Wow, not sure I've ever seen a three-whooper, but that was close. Fine shooting, Helen. I stared at the girl in awe, as many of us did. She hung her head a moment and took a deep breath, then proudly raised it again, brushed the wavy back hair off her face, as if ready for her next challenge. My final two archery rounds were worse than my first, and as the teams left the clearing to head back to their tents, Fran took me aside. Practice is everything in life, Joe. It's Joey. Right. Shoot another five or ten, please, before you head back. You know, I couldn't sew a button on a shirt until my mom made me do it an entire night. She gave me a chummy wink and went off with the others. I groaned. I had developed a blister on my right index finger and my shoulders ached. An afternoon nap beckoned. Mosquitoes found me, drawn to my sweat. I trudged back into the wood patch to get my arrows, forgot exactly what poison ivy looked like, and suddenly didn't care. Make fear your target! I spun around. Dark-haired and darker-eyed Helen addressed me from halfway across the clearing, where she had hung back. What'd you say? She threw all her hair over one shoulder and walked towards me. There was a graceful, confident stroll to her movements. She was wrong. Made in Fran of Camelot, I mean. You don't aim at the bullseye, you aim at fear. Fear? Yep, fear of people watching, fear of failing, or pissing or crapping your pants or saying or doing the wrong thing. Face it, kiddo, fear will beat you every time if you let it. Grab the bow. I didn't really like being called kiddo either, but Helen in that moment could have gotten away with calling me Joey Bishop. 
I quickly found the last arrow and ran back to pick up my bow. She curled her mouth into a warm smile and put out her hand. Joey, right? Yeah. And Helen? Helen Fishblatt. A pleasure. I didn't visibly react to her odd name, but my two-second pause was enough for her to pick up on. I know, it's weird. I tried to change it once, but there was already someone named Rachel Fishblatt. Grab an arrow. I laid one across my bow and took my stance. Helen slid behind me. She had washed her hair with some kind of earthy shampoo that smelled all cinnamony, like holiday potpourri. All right, now kick every stupid fear out of your head and focus on the bullseye. Okay. Get them all? If not, if there's any left, stick them on the bullseye, because you're going to impale those punks. I drew back the arrow. She put one hand on my gut and the other on my spine. Back straight now. Okay, it is. Your mom's yelling at you to pick up your room, and that's her dad's center with a yellow face. But she wouldn't. I always, then it's the dirty dishes. We're playing here, Joey. You're afraid to talk back to her, and there's that fear now, big and ugly and right in the middle. So shoot it. I squinted at the target and shot. The arrow stuck its landing on the outer edge of a blue circle. Hey, she cried, you're an archer. I rapidly went through my four other arrows, Helen backing away a bit further each time. The first hit the woods again, but then I pinned Danny Blight's smug face to the bullseye and hit the red ring with all three. Helen didn't whoop at all, but grinned and gave me a solid victory hug. She was definitely a few years older than me, like 16, and had actual breaths I could feel against my t-shirt. Ahem, Miss Fishblack. It was Fran, waving her out of the clearing. Thanks for the lesson and all, I said. She gave my arm a gentle squeeze. See you at grub time and strolled away, still unhurried, still confident. Okay, so uh, next week I'll be back with my third and final little reading. And also at that time I will in the uh, have a link or a, a post a little trivia contest regarding 1970, and whoever comes and uh, does the best in that and gets me the responses first will win a free signed copy of the Poor Truth Classic. Uh, the Amazon link is below in, on YouTube. You can get the link right there. And uh, that's it for now. We'll see you in a week.